Shalom, covering my name is Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Russia has responded to the U.S.'s uh, accusations that the Sukhoi fighters have been flying dangerously close, maneuvering around U.S. spy planes that are flying around Crimea. And of course, Russia's response is give your pilots new maps and up update them that Crimea is part of Russia. Well, this continued maneuvering has really angered American officials. But at the same time, there may be a reason why Russia is doing this, a reason that we are not being told publicly back here at home. Uh, and I certainly don't agree with the fact of Russia maneuvering as close as they are to spy planes. But obviously, if you're a spy plane and you're flying next to your enemy's territory, uh, you might call it international waters, but if Russia is claiming Crimea as its own territory, then it's not technically in international waters. Uh, but nonetheless, it's not making the situation any easier. And the Sukhoi, as is seen here in the photo right here, uh, is extremely close to this uh, P-3 spy plane that the U.S. has, a prop-driven plane. Now, keep in mind that the prop-driven plane's cameras are able to zoom in on the, uh, the, the plane next to it, uh, they did claim that the plane was in five feet of uh, the U.S. aircraft. I can believe that to be true from some of the video footage that I've seen already. I do think that that is unprofessional on Russia's part. I think that the Russian military uh, can at least get the message across just by the fact of their presence. Uh, and also in the case of the video footage right here, I'm going to put this up on the screen. I'm going to try not to let it play, though, as of yet because this is the Russian fighter. They zoomed in. I did watch them actually zoom in on this part of the film clip here so that you could actually see that the Russian uh, Su-27 was fully armed. I think that lets the pilots know well enough that Russia's not playing games. It's not an unarmed aircraft there. Now, I think in the clip that we have here, you don't get to see that zoom in. You don't get to see the camera actually zoom in. But if you go to some of the original footage there, they do zoom in on that particular plane there. Uh, the plane is, as you can see in this particular photo, sitting a little further out than what it looks like. But it is extremely dangerously close. And America is correct on that, that they are dangerously close. But why would Russia be so dangerously close to a spy plane right now circling around Crimea? Is there something else going on on the ground that might give concern that Russia is expecting something to change in the very near future? Well, the answer to that question we got today from our good friend Lorenzo with already happened here, uh, sharing me this particular uh, tweet that he had put out. And this is showing Ukrainian sources report an increase in military activity around Kiev both day and night. At nighttime, they're moving the tanks. T-64, T-72s, BMPs, MTLBs, 2S3, uh, uh, Akatsia. They're moving all this military equipment around at nighttime under the cover of darkness, which I'll show you some of these here. Let's see if we can get it blown up big enough for you guys here on the screen. Uh, that one's kind of hard to see, but you have snow in the background there. You have the tanks here loaded. You can see the tanks in the nighttime when they're moving around. But during the daytime, a little bit different story there. They cover up these tanks so it's not as easy, easily, easily spotted from the air what's on these trains here. Uh, Lorenzo is showing quite a bit of photographs here of these different uh, military vehicles. This one, again, you don't see probably that well on your end there, guys, but it is a long train there, more at a distance. Tank after tank after tank after tank after tank after tank after tank. All being seen. I just counted easily, what, about a half, a, well, no, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This one here is not a tank. Eight tanks, just from what you can visibly see right there. Uh, this here is in Kiev. Another train car load of tanks here. One, two, three, four, five, six tanks you can see just in this photo here. And it's a close-up photo. We're not seeing the entire train. How many tanks are on this? What is Kiev up to? Russia, we know, moved their S-400 system to Crimea and started doing military drills there. We know that Kiev has just developed its own ICBM. Russia's anticipating a fight. 
why Russia has also been doing military drills up in Belarus as well as in uh, Kaliningrad uh, doing the military drills there. There is something going on and Russia realizes it and knows a fight is about to ensue. I think this is what's happening also when it comes to Syria with Afrin. Uh, this little city in, uh, in Syria's northern province called Afrin where the Kurds are being held up, surrounded by Turkish militant fighters in every direction, bombarded by the Turkish military, even using napalm against civilians in this little town here. It is another case of Armenian genocide, and Erdogan is nothing but a genocidal maniac. He shouldn't even be called the president of Turkey, but just a genocidal maniac, just out to do all the dirty work. You know, he's doing the dirty work because, you know, as a good friend of mine that I had that worked for Gulen Fagan, once told me, he said, Erdogan was promised a great deal in a new world order so long as he would do NATO's bidding of their dirty work. And that's exactly what the man does. U.S. says Syria may be developing new types of chemical weapons. Now we got the Jerusalem Post reporting on this. Uh, this is to stir nothing up but to attack Syria. And I think that this uh, type of rhetoric right here going on is to justify Turkey's involvement in northern Syria. All the world community, such as uh, Emmanuel Macron, like we see here in this article here from the National here, uh, Macron issues stark warning to Turkey as incursion against Kurds in Syria deepens. No, Macron, I don't think really gives a flip about the Kurds either. I hate to be blunt about it, but I'm just going to tell you like it is. And in fact, actually, the shame is not just on Turkey or on NATO partners, the shame is on Russians, President as well, President Putin, and that of President Donald Trump. Nobody come in the aid of these people that have been the best fighters against ISIS. You know, I can kind of expect the U.S. not to come to their aid because, after all, Obama did create the force there, and it was to topple the Syrian government. But in the case of Russia... When you suggested that they have their own autonomous uh, or, or their own autonomy inside of Syria after the end of this war was over, why haven't you come to these people's aid? Instead, you have weighed out your greater option, Turkey. That is a shame on the Russian people. On the Russian government, I should say, not the Russian people so much, just like America. American people are not made up by its leaders, although we tend to think we elect our leaders. I don't think we elect our leaders. I don't think we elected Donald Trump either. We, we kind of make it look like we did, but we really didn't elect Trump. Let me face the facts. President Trump is obvious to say, as much as I would like to say that maybe he could do something good, all you have to do is see, he's like he's on a little chain. Pull the chain, make him bark the other way. He doesn't bark the right way, bark the other way. Comes out in the State of Union address and everything. Russia's a major danger. Jeez. Russia has, it has very much dis, uh, brought a distraught to me. You know, I can understand President Bashar al-Assad saying that he would protect the Kurds. And then when the fight comes on, he kind of backs down. He doesn't have a whole heck of a lot of choice. He's barely surviving by a thread. I know that President uh, Putin says, well, Russia, you know, that they won the war against ISIS. But we haven't won the war against all these NATO allies that are inside of Syria, have we? You know, and this is something. Israel, it's a shame on Israel as well. Israel's leaders. This is the land of our mothers. This is the land of Leah. This is the land of Zilpah. Rachel, this is the land of Bela. All four mothers of Israel are from Syria, just across the Euphrates River there. And we allow the Kurds. And, and, and the sad thing is to me about when it comes to the Kurds, because the Kurds, Israel has had a close relationship with the Kurdish people to begin with. The Kurds, when they were trying to set up their own state over in Iran, northern Iran, which that is one place that they should be allowed to have autonomous region. They're very, they're very dominant in that part of the land there. They were flying Israeli flags. And now Israel sits quietly by. 
will somebody come to the aid of these people? You know, and I even see some of those that are that are strong supporters of Syria really make it look like, well, let them suffer. Not, not all Syrians, by the way, I know that. There's a lot of Syrians that are crying out right now that somebody needs to do something about the Kurdish people because they have been valiant fighters against ISIS. And I am ashamed. I am ashamed of the United States for not doing anything, for Russia for not doing anything, and for Israel for not doing anything. Bashar al-Assad, I understand why he hasn't. He's really in the middle of a situation. If he strikes back, he destroys his relationship with Russia, and then he hits a NATO partner. That, that'll ju that's all that NATO is wanting. You think Macron cares about the Kurds? No. That's the green light. Strike Turkey so we can all invade and take down Bashar al-Assad. Because even in his little article right here, he's calling for the removal of Bashar al-Assad. Russia must rein in Bashar al-Assad. The only democratic president the country has had. And as far as Israel, our leaders there, this man never came against us. His father did, yes. His father started a war with our country in 1973. But President Assad has not come against Israel in a war. The man needs help. The Kurds and the Syrians should unite together. And I know they were trying to do so before this attack. And then they were just left there to be killed. It's a massacre. And not only that, this article right here, Turkish-backed rebels mutilate a body of a dead female Kurdish fighter. I'm not going to show you the video. I will post a link in the description, but I warn you, it is extremely graphic. And out of respect for the egalitarian views of Kurdish women, and I agree with them and support their right and their liberty of freedom, I will not myself post this video on Israeli News Live. But after she is mutilated, they strip her body to just put it publicly before the world. And this, you know, and, and, and in the article here, in this article here on Amman News, they actually state on there that it appears to be that the fighters that was doing this is the exact same ones that took and beheaded a Palestinian boy. 13-year-old Palestinian boy. This is your Turkish military that they're backing. Where's, I mean, I realize war, there's no decency in war, period. War is just of the devil, no matter how you look at it. It is the fallen angels that taught it and taught it to kill us all off. And that's what they're doing today, making ready. You know why? Because these stinking Nephilim that are going to rise up on this earth, after they kill off as many of us as they possibly can, they'll make it a lot easier for them to come up on the earth than to eat you all. You know, people need to wake up. I mean, it's really sad. It's very sad at what we're seeing here today going on in the world here. And, uh, you know, friends, I I'm Steve Benoon with Israeli News Live. I'm so sorry to be the bearer of bad news here. It's very sad what's happening over there. Don't forget as well, though, as we mentioned here, what's going on over there in Ukraine. Lorenzo has already happened there, sending this to me here this, uh, this afternoon here. I really appreciate Lorenzo and his dedicated work searching for the things that are happening, the hot spots in the world there. This is why we see Russia acting the way they're doing. I Again, I do not believe that it's right for Russia to act in the way that they did with a spy plane. But, you know, obviously, if we have a spy plane following us in our country here, we go up as well and intercept. But I don't think the U.S. either does what Russia is doing. So it's, it is very provocative. And, 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 and clearly, uh, it's also, you know, <laughs> I guess Russia trying to show that they're not playing games either. But there is a reason why Russia is nervous. And that is because Russia as well, if we're able to see it here, that there is a major buildup of military forces. What do you think Russia knows about going on inside of Ukraine? Russia is getting ready for a battle. And of course, the huge military parade over in Stalingrad to celebrate the, uh, the victory and the battle there in Stalingrad. All that military firepower, including nuclear-capable uh, Iskander missiles there. I don't expect to see them leaving the region anytime soon. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live, Erev Tov.